The European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, EBRD, is providing a loan of up to 20 million US dollars to support youth entrepreneurship in Egypt. The new EBRD financing falls under the EBRD Youth and Business Program in Egypt and it will be extended as sub-loans to private, micro, small and medium-sized enterprises led or owned by local entrepreneurs under the age of 35. A comprehensive technical cooperation package focused on staff training and skills development to help employees better understand and serve the financial needs of young entrepreneurs. In addition, capacity building and advisory services will be provided directly to MSMEs to support the development of youth entrepreneurs and to share technical expertise. The EBRD package will be complemented by investment incentives provided by the European Union's neighborhood investment platform, Egypt Micro and Small Financial Inclusion Programme. The EBRD also signed a new agreement under the EBRD Green Economy Financing Facility supported by the European Union. EBRD financing is extended to private sub-borrowers, including companies and MSMEs, for green investments such as renewable energy and energy efficiency projects. With this new financing, the cooperation between the two partners will reach 185 million US dollars in funds to be on lent for green projects. The EBRD's Youth in Business program enables young entrepreneurs to access critically needed financing and technical assistance to grow their small businesses through dedicated credit lines to banks and microfinance institutions for on lending to MSMEs run by young entrepreneurs. The credit lines are complemented by technical assistance for partner banks to strengthen their lending capacity. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, continuing our discussion with Dr. Khalil. Sir, now, all, I mean, most of the youth now are wanting to have their own business, their own startups, they're all entrepreneurs and it's basically the the language of the generation. Now the EBRD uh, actually is working on having 20 million US dollars to support the entrepreneurs here in Egypt. Now how much of of a leap or a change in the culture of the youth and this sort of generation to actually try and they don't the majority of them don't want to be working in multinationals or private companies or uh, institutions or whatever they most of them want to have their own businesses want to have their own innovative uh, business and investment how much do you feel this is changing the landscape of the and really the, the, the future of, yes, the, of the youth. As I've just told you, every generation is born for new challenges. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the young generation, young people nowadays, uh, they, maybe they'll be able to take donation. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, we have to know, have they got the know-how mm -hmm. or not? Because you could give me the fund and simply uh, I spend it away without being able to invest it in the right channel. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, definitely there could be uh, some organizations, international organizations providing youth with uh, some funding and donations, but at the same time, as I've told you before, mm -hmm. youth should be well equipped with good education to be able to master any facility or equipment they take mm -hmm. and they get so for example you tell me Mohammed you got three million dollars to start your own business and I don't know how to start so simply maybe uh, I'll squander them all mm -hmm. I squander all the sum of money and I'll get back to you I tell you I need you more and then maybe I'll be in trouble then mm -hmm. so if we're going to provide youth with donation through international organizations or the government we have to provide them uh, alongside with the donation, with uh, the know-how, with mm -hmm. the education, with the certificates, with experts and consultants to be yes. available online, to be available 24-7 uh, mm -hmm. as consultations because uh, this is capital. Yes. And of course, you know, 
uh, when, uh, when any international organization provides capital or donation, they really need to see solid results. Mm -hmm. They need to see that youth are progressing and youth won't be able to do that without having the background. Mm -hmm. The second part of the question mm -hmm. regarding the ambitions of youth, yes, definitely many young people I know, they want to start their own business. Mm -hmm. And they go start their own social media pages. Yes, advertise themselves, which is good. Mm -hmm. But do they all st uh, linger on and stay? In the market, some, many of them simply stumble down, stumble and fall. Mm -hmm. Honestly speaking, some of them, um, they've got the ambition and youth are ambitious. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they must have kind of the feasibility study. I want to have this in the long run. Short-term plans, long-term plans. Mm -hmm. This means education in the field of business. We have to provide our youth with the business first. This, that also, if we're talking about the ambitions of youth, many of them, when they simply get frustrated, they think about the other option of traveling, mm -hmm. immigrating, or simply finding a scholarship as a way out. Yes. And sometimes, even their dreams mm -hmm. are kind of, uh, they, 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 they don't have kind of the proper education to achieve their dreams. So let's mm -hmm. be honest about that. Many of them are ambitious, many of them have got, some of them have got good education mm -hmm. to start business or to travel and maybe come back. And this takes me to the very first starting point. Mm -hmm. If we're talking about the steps of the government, they're appreciated, mm -hmm. but we need more in terms of education and awareness. Yes. And I think I told you before we start, mm -hmm. we go live that role models. Mm -hmm. Media and social media should shed more light on scholars, professors, young people who start from scratch, from zero to hero. Those role models could be inspirational to young people. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, we do appreciate the role of athletes, celebrities, actors and actresses, but we need new faces. Mm -hmm. New faces that could trigger all the abilities inside you. Yes. Well, it is, I mean, there are other uh, governmental platforms, yes. uh, for instance, uh, in cooperation with UNICEF, the Mishwari Initiative, which yes. actually works on providing financial uh, aid. aid and also giving them the know-how of how yes. to finance their own business, uh, the, the legal procedures that they need to actually work on, the accounting of it, and, all, and the digital skills uh, as well. But, I mean, there are about 1.8 billion uh, youth um, aged between 10 to 24 around the world. Now, are they all having, including Egyptians obviously, are they all sharing the same sort of difficulties and challenges and obstacles? Do they share the same sort of goals and dreams in their respective countries? Also the introduction of artificial intelligence, a lot of the older generation are maybe feeling a little bit threatened by them. Maybe the, the artificial intelligence will be replacing them in the workforce. Are the youth encouraged by AI? Will they also feel that maybe AI will take their place and do the work that they could be doing? Or is it something, an extra tool that they can use to enhance their own careers? Okay, so part of your question is asking about youth across the world. Yes. We have, must admit that culture defines how we, the, the mentality and the mindset, mm -hmm. okay? So cultures in some countries, of course, are different from cultures in the Arab world mm -hmm. or exclusively in Egypt. Mm -hmm. We've got our own sub-Arab kind of culture as well. Mm -hmm. So, of course, yes, we are so different mm -hmm. since cultures are different. Mm -hmm. And uh, our mindset uh, of the uh, Egyptian youth, of course, is different from the uh, mindset of youth in the Gulf because at the end of the day, the economic situation sometimes shapes the way we look at things. Mm -hmm. So, in some countries, um, I won't say the first world because, mm -hmm. um, honestly, I don't like the term first yes. world, third world, because mm 
well, first world, third world, are, we're, we're talking only about fi uh, the finance and the economics, mm -hmm. but uh, our, our culture is d deeply rooted mm -hmm. in different civilizations. So, once again, in some countries, in Europe and the West, youth over there are trying to find ways how AI, artificial intelligence, is adding to the luxury of the life. Mm -hmm. Youth over there in the West do appreciate and they are fully aware of the importance of gaining market skills mm -hmm. since school. Mm -hmm. For example, for instance, mm -hmm. Finland, mm -hmm. which is number one, one of the best countries in education. Mm -hmm. Youth over there, if we talk about teens, if we consider teens, youth, mm -hmm. age 14 to 16, 17, you find educators over there at school exploring the talents of students and then mm -hmm. putting them on tracks to invest in these uh, talents. On the other hand, if we're, looking in e if we're looking at Egypt, you find parents, they want just to make sure mm -hmm. their kids go to what we call the top-notch faculties and schools, mm -hmm. medicine, engineering, mm -hmm. regardless of the job needs, of the market needs. Yes. Once again, this mm -hmm. will take us to, the, of course, this will take us to another problem, which is unemployment. Yes. And well, what about AI, artificial intelligence, and Egyptian youth, for instance? Art uh, of course, y yeah. Herein, I think that uh, some Egyptians have mm -hmm. become aware that artificial intelligence has become a kind of a reality, mm -hmm. uh, inevitable reality. So, simply, we have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you find chat GPT, I have to deal with it. Yes. I have to deal with it to add to my studies, mm -hmm. to help me in my studies, not to study on my behalf, yes, not to do the assignments on my behalf. Mm -hmm. So this is something very important. I, of course, as I said before, in different interviews, different channels, mm -hmm. artificial intelligence is an, a kind of an, a revolution, mm -hmm. and we have to be fully prepared yes. through awareness campaigns, and different companies maybe mm -hmm. have to limit the abilities of artificial intelligence mm -hmm. because they are being sometimes uh, abused mm -hmm. yes. by some young people. Yes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, in a fast-changing uh, world, definitely uh, still a lot more needs to be done, especially in terms of youth empowerment. And as Dr. Khalil has mentioned, every generation has its own challenges and hopefully our Egyptian youth would be able to withstand and overcome any sort of challenges. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this edition of the Daily Debate, a special edition marking the 10th anniversary of the July 3rd roadmap. But before we go, I'd like to thank my distinguished guest, Dr. Mohamed Khalil, the educational expert and trainer T uh, teacher, trainer, Dr. Khali, always a pleasure you. having you with us. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay tuned for more coming up on Nile International. I'm Haini Saif. Thank you for joining us.